morning, sweet Hannah. Today's reading is going to be from a cookbook. This is Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. And I metaphorically just opened the book and put my finger down on a page and found a sidebar that looked interesting. When it is recognized that in the Sierra, the available water is largely that provided to the streams from the melting snows and from rains in the rainy season, it will be realized that these sources of fresh water could not provide the liberal quantity of iodine essential for human growth and development. It was, accordingly, a matter of great interest to discover that these Indians used regularly dried fish eggs from the sea. Commerce in these dried foods is carried, is carried on today as it no doubt has been for centuries. When I inquired of them why they used this material, they explained that it was necessary to maintain the fertility of their women. I was informed also that every exchange depot and market carried these dried fish eggs so that they were always available. Another sea product of very great importance and one that was universally available was dried kelp. Upon inquiry, I learned that the Indians used it so that they would not get <clears throat> quote unquote big necks like the whites. The kelp provided a very rich source of iodine as well as of copper, which is very important to them in the utilization of iron for building an exceptionally efficient quantity of blood for carrying oxygen liberally at those high altitudes. An important part of their dietary consists today as in the past of potatoes, which are gathered and frozen dried and powdered, and preserved in the powdered form. This powder is used in soups with llama meat and other products. This was by Western Pri Weston Price, DDS, in Nutrition and Physics Degeneration. Another sidebar. There is more simplicity in the man who eats caviar and impulse than in the man who eats grape nuts on principle. That was by G.K. Chesterton. And now, to Sally's words. Our recipes for hors d'oeuvres and dips derive from a variety of ethnic traditions and feature fresh, unprocessed ingredients with an emphasis on fish eggs, roe, and caviar. Fish eggs are valued by traditional peoples throughout the world for their ability to prevent problems of thyroid gland, promote fertility, and nourish pregnant women and growing children. Although they come under the category of gourmet, fish roe can serve as a basis for everyday, everyday snacks and lunchtime fare. If you tolerate milk products, we also recommend our cream cheese flax spreads, page 165, as a delicious and synergistic combination of omega-3 fatty acids, saturated fats, and sulfur-containing pro proteins. First recipe on the list, teramosalata, teramos which means Greek roe salad. <clears throat> this recipe serves 12. One pound of, sm one pound of smoked whole cod roe, casing removed, available at Mid Middle Eastern markets, often canned or in jars. One half cup pima cream or cream, cream fraiche, <clears throat> as on page 84. One clove of garlic mashed, juice of a half lemon, one quarter teaspoon pepper, 
one half cup extra virgin olive oil. Use this delicious pink cream to spread on toasts to fill celery or served in a crock with whole grain crackers, page 518, or triangle croutons, page 520. Place roe, cream, garlic, lemon juice, and pepper in food processor and process until smooth. Using the attachment for adding oil, add the olive drop by drop with the motor running to form a thick mayonnaise-like emulsion. Chill several hours. Variations. Budget roe spread. Use one pound raw fish roe casing removed from any kind of fish rather than the smoked cod roe and add sea salt to taste. High nutrient roe can often be obtained in season at very low cost from a good fish merchant. Next recipe. Salmon egg toasts. Serves two to four. Two ounces of fresh salmon eggs, two to four slices of whole grain bread, two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of fresh dill chopped. Toast bread and spread liberally with butter. Spread salmon eggs on toast and sprinkle with chopped dill. Recipe 3. Anchovy toast. Mix one dozen. Twelve triangle croutons, page 520. One cup anchovy paste, page 143. Two tablespoons salmon roe, optional. Spread croutons with anchovy paste and decorate with optional two or three salmon eggs. Next recipe, mackerel spread. Mix one to one and a half cups. One cup pickled mackerel or herring, page 242. One half cup pima cream or cream fraiche, page 84. Juice of one half lemon and sea salt and pepper. Blend the mackerel or herring, cultured cream and lemon juice in the food processor. Season to taste. Serve with whole grain crackers, page 518, or triangle croutons, page 520, for adventurous eaters. Ooh, and here's another sidebar. I haven't read it, don't know what it says, so we'll just read it, see how it goes. The hardy folk of Nazareth. The hardy folk of the Northern Isles feasted on quote unquote made dishes. They had struba, coagulated milk whipped to the consistency of cream. Klocks, K L O K K S, was new milk simmered until clotted and flavored with cinnamon and sugar. Kirn, K I R N, mill, was a curd of buttermilk with milk gruel. Blaund, B-L-A-U-N-D, was way of bledic, B-L-E-D-D-I-K, or buttermilk. Hungmil was cream, H-U-N-G-M-I-L-L, was cream hum, hung in a bag like cream cheese. Kalaba, K-L-A-B-B-A, -B -B was junket, set, set thick by action of rennet. Eustine, E-U-S-T-E-E-N, was hot milk reduced by sherry to curd and whey. Pram, P-R-A-M-M, -M, was cold milk mixed with meal, a dish for Bayern or beggar. Egaluri, uh, e G G A L O O R I E was salt, eggs, and milk boiled. Dapukal, D A P U K K L E, was oats called burstein when ground. Virpa, V I R P A, 
was a brew made of corn husks. A very popular dish was knocket, K-N-O-C-K-E-T, made of corn, cracked wheat, or groats, boiled with kale and pork. At Christmas, they had Yule Brunis, uh, Y-U-L-E-B-R-U-N-I-E-S, or rye cakes. Ploiskan, P-L-O-Y-S-K-O-N-N, was a shortbread. The dairy and vegetable products were enhanced with slot, S-L-O-T-T, fish roe beaten to cream with flour and salt added, or with stap, S-T-A-P-P, a mixture of fish heads with liver. Special palates were pleased with kiosedheads, K-I-O-S-S-E-D-H-E-E-D-S, fish heads, which had become gamey. At Christmas and at, and at embarking on perilous voyages, they had whip kill, egg yolks with sugar, beaten with cream, and a force with potent spirit. This is from the Orkney and Shetland Miscellany. Myth. Vitamin B can be obtained from certain plant sources such as blue-green algae and soy products. Truth. Vitamin B is not absorbed from plant sources. Modern soy products increase the body's need for B12. Soybeans, chemist, oh, this is from Soybeans, colon, chemistry, chemistry and Technology, Volume 1, 1972. You're getting bored. I could stop. But I could keep reading and you could 